أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم مذاكرة بي شيخ محمد فوزي الكركري قدس الله سره فنان ذا شيخ بارت 3 The Essence of the Disciple's Pursuit of Closeness to the Sheikh A female disciple recounts a dream where the Sheikh entered her home and her deceased father appeared as if he had returned to life to visit them. After she seated herself, the Sheikh addressed her with gentle guidance. Come closer, step by step. She then left the sheikh and found herself in a melodramatic wedding ceremony. Looking at this spectacle, she reminded herself, I am uninterested in all this and wish to remain undistracted. This wedding, this attire, this fleeting infatuation, they are all irrelevant. I am in pursuit of a different truth. She then looked in the sky and found the verse of the light from Surah An-Nur, 35 and read it. What is the essence of the disciple's pursuit of closeness to the Sheikh? The essence of drawing nearer to the Sheikh lies in understanding the significance of this encounter. It allows for a profound and all encompassing reflection, enabling the disciple to embody the verse of divine light within themselves. In this spiritual journey, you are taught the art of fana learning to dissolve your being within the sacred dimensions of the niche, mishkat, the lamp, misbah, the crystal, az and the shining star, al kawkab durri and so on. The verse continues, Nurun ala nur, yahdi Allahu li nurihi man yasha. Light upon light, Allah guides to his light whom he wills. An nur 35. The pursuit of drawing nearer to the shaykh necessitates vigilant self-observation, whether in the presence of the shaykh or in his absence. It is crucial to internalize and perpetually reflect upon this manifestation of the divine light. This unwavering commitment is indispensable and imperative, for it represents the only way to reunite with the divine presence of Allah. You can say, no, I am already in worship of Allah, adhering to the ways of the Prophet ﷺ, from Quranic recitations to performing Farth and Nawafil prayers. While not diminishing the merit of your devout actions and the blessings they accrue, may Allah reward you abundantly and elevate your rank among the righteous, this perspective might obscure the essential insight into the ailments of the self. The elusive truth about your innermost nature and its reflections remain undiscovered without this critical introspection, or muraqaba. The clarity about one's flaws is seldom found in solitude, but reflected through the interactions with the mu'min, the believer, as the Prophet says, al-mu'minu mar'atu akhi. The mu'min, the believer, is the mirror of his brother. This reflection aids in recognizing and addressing one's deficiencies, a task impossible to undertake alone. Our unawareness of the heart's afflictions persists until the guidance of the shaykh illuminates them. Similarly, an ailing person, oblivious to their illness, only comes to understanding and healing through a physician's diagnosis and prescribed treatment a journey from ignorance to recovery. Thus, the true objective is the healing, not merely the acquaintance with the healer. Engaging with the sheikh is not about the superficial encounters, photographs, greetings, or shared meals, but about the spiritual connection and enlightenment gained. Did this presence align your heart with the qibla? Did it open the door for your heart? Did you attain divine knowledge or were you simply present next to the shaykh without deriving any benefit? Physical proximity to the shaykh does not equate to spiritual closeness. Some find a deeper connection in his absence, driven by longing, while others may be near, yet distant in essence. Each seeker's path is unique, influenced by their personal disposition and suluk in the divine hadra. Understanding varies with each individual's perspective, shaped by the intrinsic elements, fire, air, water, and earth. Just as the physical world varies from mountains to seas, 
The inner landscape of souls differs, influenced by their elemental composition. Therefore, the Sheikh versed in the nuances of these spiritual elements and their interplay within the human ego guides each disciple through their unique journey towards divine presence, tailoring the path to the individual nature and capacity. Hence, we declare, Man arafa nafsa, arafa rabba. He who knows his self, knows his Lord. But how does one gain insight into oneself? This revelation comes through the guidance of a seasoned mentor, an adept on the inner self. This mentor, in revealing your nature to you, crafts scenarios and circumstances as lessons. When you are truly ready to heal, Allah aligns you with this mentor to address and purify the ego, discarding its detrimental traits and nurturing the virtues bestowed by Allah's generosity. Thus, you transition to become one of the akhyar, the good ones, in the divine habra. However, the journey demands acceptance. If your shaykh unveils the ego's blemishes and prescribes a regimen for betterment, encompassing self-discipline, physical endeavors, dietary habits, social interactions, and additional prayers, but you resist, it parallels rejecting a physician's remedy for a physical ailment. In this resistance, the fault lies not with the mentor, but within your own perceptions. The mentor serves as a bridge to the divine, a conduit to al-bari. Entering the realm of divine wisdom necessitates passing through its proper gateway. Echoing the prophetic words, أنا مدينة العلم وعلي بابها I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its door. Therefore, access to the sacred lineage of Al al Bayt becomes imperative. This journey transcends mere affection. It is an exercise in self mastery, akin to collaborating with a medical or academic expert to refine and subdue the ego, propelling you towards spiritual fulfillment. Yet, the prevailing issue is a misunderstanding of the mentor's essence. This lack of awareness leads to misinterpreting the mentor-disciple dynamic, reducing it to a mere social interaction rather than a transformative bond. Consider this relationship akin to an academic endeavor, where the mentor's instruction is aimed at liberating you from the ego's clutches and drawing you closer to Allah. The true value lies not in merely meeting the mentor, but in the outcomes of such encounters. Just as knowing medical specialists does not equate to health, recognizing a sheikh without embracing their wisdom yields no spiritual progress. Claims of acquaintance or blessings from a sheikh miss the point if they do not lead to profound understanding and transformation. Upon finding the gateway to divine knowledge, one must seek permission to enter, embracing the conduct and discipline necessary for admission. What does the city of knowledge demand for your acceptance? It invites you to become a denizen, a companion in the spiritual lineage of the Prophet ﷺ. The gatekeeper, your shaykh, instructs you in the proper decorum and imparts you the knowledge essential for navigating the sacred domain. Through his guidance, you are acquainted with the city's lore, sciences, and secrets, ensuring you find your place without losing your way. Thus, you are not just a visitor, but become an integral part of its community. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallaita ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد